Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCNP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester one, introduction to network. And this is chapter five. Section 5.2, address resolution protocol or ARP. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to describe the purpose of ARP, address resolution protocol, explain how ARP requests impact the network and host performance. Introduction to ARP. So our purpose, sending node needs a way to find out the MAC address of the destination for a given Ethernet link. The ARP protocol provides two basic functions, resolves an IP address to MAC address and maintain a table of mapping. So for example, if you go to a device and you say, I don't know, ping 101111, that device, okay, it's got the information for IP address, which is layer three information because you typed ping 10111, but it needs to know to resolve that IP address to a MAC address. And one way that it's going to do that dynamically is going to send a broadcast message, which is ARP is a broadcast, to try and resolve that. And say, okay, broadcast, who's got IP address 10.1.1.1.1? The device who's got IP address 10.1.1.1 will reply and say, yeah, me, and we got the MAC address of that device. And we put it on the table, we keep it on the table, so maintaining the table of mapping. So I need to send information to 192.168.1.7. So this PC is trying to send information to this PC, but I only have the IP address. I don't know the MAC address of the device that has that IP address. Now, how can we get this IP address? Usually you type ping, that's how you get it because you actually type it. Or for example, if you go to a website or something, then this device is gonna ask the DNS server says, okay, well, what is the IP address of H4? The DNS server is gonna resolve that IP address for us. And then we take that IP address and say, oh, hold on, hey, great, we resolved it, but we still do need our MAC address. ARP functions and operations, so ARP table, it's used to find the data link layer address that is mapped to the destination IP address, IPv4 address. As the node receives a frame from the media, it records the source IP address and MAC address as a mapping in the ARP table. ARP address resolution protocol requests our layer two broadcast to all devices on Ethernet LAN. The node that matches the IP address in the broadcast will reply. If no device is response to the ARP request, the packet is dropped because a frame cannot be created. Note the static mapping interest can be entered in the ARP table, but this is rarely done. So for example, if you like that, you found an IP address, you broadcast a message saying, who's got IP address 10111. I should say 10.1.1.1, but you know what I mean. And then the, the correct the correct device will say, yep, yeah, it's me. But there's a security risk here because uh, some uh, intruder can turn around and say, yeah, it's me as well. There's no way to actually find out is is it real device who's I'm asking or is it someone just pretending to be? There's few things that you can do there with the switching, but that's ahead when we are starting chapter four, I think, no, semester four. ARP operation, host A wants to send data to IP address 10.10.0.3, but has no ARP entry. So as you can see, host A wants to send data to host C, but there's nothing on the ARP cache. So mm -hmm. what the host A is gonna do, is gonna send a broadcast and saying, okay, who's got, what is the MAC address of 10.10.0.3? The broadcast is gonna reach every device up to the router. Now the routers, they hate uh, broadcast, so they will not send them to another part of the network, they will drop them. Host C with an IP address 10.10.0.3 response with the ARP reply, that includes its MAC address. And now the A will update his, or host A will update the, the cache, ARP cache, which says 10.10.0.3 has got this MAC address. Then the host A will be able to communicate directly with the host C using the host C's MAC address. ARP role in remote communication. If the destination IPv4 host is on the local network, the frame will use the MAC address of the disk device as a destination MAC address. If the destination IPv4 host is on the local, not on the local network, the source uses the ARP process to determine the MAC address of the router interface servicing as the gateway. In the event that the gateway entry is not in the table, the ARP request is used to retrieve the MAC address associated with the IP address of the router's interface. Okay, if I go back, I'm going back here. So for example, if PCA, if PCA wants to talk to somebody who's outside, down here somewhere, 
Now, it's, there's no point to send the broadcast saying, okay, what's the IP address of the device down here? Because no one's going to reply. Now, the PC will find out, okay, well, that device I want to try to talk to is on the remote network. I need the MAC address of my gateway. I need this MAC address. If the if it's on the table, great. If it's not on the table, then it will send a broadcast. Router will find out and it will reply. And then the PC will put will use that MAC address as a destination. And you know the router then will change it, will put itself as a source and it will continue. The removing our entries from the ARP tables, the ARP cache timer removes ARP entries that has not been used for a specific period of time. Commands might be also be used to manually remove all or some of the entries in the ARP table. So show, ARP, show IP ARP, this will show you what is on the ARP table of the router, for example, what we have resolved. We have resolved these IP addresses to these MAC addresses. If you go to the client machine, Windows client machine, you say ARP minus A, and it will show you what addresses have been resolved. You can see that we have few, quite a few static, but then we start learning dynamic. We can resolve them dynamically. How ARP can create a problem? Because of the broadcast, it means that everybody is like, if I send an uh, ARP message saying, okay, who's got IP address 10.1.1.1? Now everybody will hear it because it's a broadcast. So everyone in that land will hear it. Even the the mobile phones or IP phones or whatever, everybody's gonna hear it. Now that, that causes uh, too much uh, broadcast overhead on the on the local area network. As well as the security risk, because with the ARP, we're just asking who's got it like blindly. If somebody else, uh, intruder, turns around yes, yeah, says me, then we're just gonna forward the packets to the intruder not very good so again like i said we can implement some security control there but those are the main problems how we can mitigate we can do segmentation by creating vlans virtual area network we are kind of like segmenting the, the broadcast domains we are making the, the broadcast domain smaller and then obviously the switch we can implement in our security so we can control what device has got the MAC address so if you ask the IP address the correct MAC address correct port should say yeah it's mine okay thank you very much for watching we see you in uh, section 5.3 LAN local area network switches bye bye